trip it has been. We are at the end of our last day. So I think I'm ready to go home. This trip is amazing and I could stay in Tokyo and Kyoto and Osaka and just the entire Kanto region really for a lot longer, but my wallet's giving out, my feet are giving out, my luggage is giving out. I think it's about time for us to go home. But this trip has been so much fun. It is everything that I wanted to get out of Japan. The people were awesome. I didn't use as much Japanese as I thought I would need, which is kind of good because I'm not really good at it. Yeah, I understand some, but really not enough. But a lot of people did speak English, and the few times when they didn't speak English, it was easy enough to kind of help figure out what we wanted, what they wanted. A lot of our words, just our cultures naturally overlap in some places, and it's easier to communicate, even if you don't speak the language. So starting out today, uh, still in Kyoto, we started out at the uh, Kyumizu Temple, which we didn't get to see the main temple outside because it's being refurbished. A lot of the temples I'm finding around here, both here in Kyoto and Tokyo, a lot of them are having work done. And I don't know officially, but it probably has something to do with them getting the Olympics in a couple years. But over there, we saw this breathtaking view of the entire city of Kyoto. The mountain, it's, the temple itself is built kind of up on the mountain, which, by the way, that was fun at 9 a.m. in the morning. Let's trek up a mountain. But I was warned, you're in Japan, steps. Lots and lots of steps. And inclines. They didn't warn me about the inclines. They warned me about the steps. They really should have warned me about the inclines. The inclines are what are killing my poor feet. Fun fact. Good socks. Don't skimp. There are certain things that you just pay a little bit more for. And when traveling, good socks are one of them. You want nice, good cotton socks. Lesson learned. But while at the temple, we were up high, there was the vegetation, we saw a couple cherry blossoms. Because of the cold weather, there weren't as many cherry blossoms as there usually is around this time of year. They're getting a later start this season. But there were some, and they were beautiful and bright and pink. They looked artificial. It looked like bubblegum or Pepto-Bismol. But the temple itself was bright and cheery. The weather was wonderful. It was just all of those steps, those steps, so many steps. But I digress. Mm -hmm. So, we've been searching for a good place to get a crepe, and today is finally the day when I get myself a Japanese crepe. Strawberry chocolate. Because... So, strawberry cheesecake, how is it? Oh, it's so good. Yeah, let me see. Probably can't see more of the strawberries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Strawberry cheesecake. Oh, there's good cheesecake. That's good. So after the temple, we moved on to Niju Castle. Uh, going to the castle, Again, more construction. I think they're just trying to make everything nice and pretty. The outside walls were just this perfect white, and there were these little lookout posts at all four corners of the estate, just looking out, reminding everybody of the grandeur of the era and the architecture and the beauty. Going in, it was more rushed. Unfortunately, we didn't have a lot of time to stay there. The tour guide wanted us in and out in half an hour, which is not enough time at all. Niju Castle doesn't have that immediate wow factor, but it is definitely not something you want to skip, especially if you're more interested in the history of Kyoto and the history of Japan as a whole. So we just got out of Niju Palace, and it was very quiet. Uh, no video cameras, no pictures are allowed in there, but it was really fun. We saw a lot of gorgeous artwork. There were a lot of murals, a lot of rooms where they told you about all of the different functions, where people would meet for this, where people did this, uh, how actually just the architecture of the room would help signify the importance and power of the shogun. And the fun fact that I learned about was this whole chirping floorboards, almost like a home security system back for the Meiji era. Basically, whenever you would walk along these wooden boards, it would cause this chirping sound like birds or crickets. Uh, or cicadas, I guess, would be another more similar sound to what we were hearing. Um, and just walking along, you constantly heard it, and it became this background noise until all of a sudden you got onto a solid floor and you didn't hear the chirping, and it actually took you back for a minute for how quiet it actually was in there without it. Uh, you really get an appreciation for just how grand and big the castle is if you just do a lap around it. It takes up an entire 
city block, or at least a block is dedicated to it. We drove around it twice in our tour bus, and let's just say it stretches for a good long while. Really makes you want to explore more of the palace. All we got to do was kind of go to the main one and see all of the pretty art. Again, something I would definitely return to because I think I missed a lot by being rushed through there so quickly. Then we moved on to the Golden Pavilion, which was, don't get me wrong, it is pretty, but after yesterday's temples and after all of the other grand shrines that we visited and these amazing feats of architecture, the Golden Pavilion's nice, but not as nice. I mean, the gardens around it, it's sitting on a lake, they're all beautiful, there's fun little shrines all around it that you can visit, and it's still a sight to see. I don't recommend skipping it. It's just, I would say, start there. If you're going to go around Kyoto and visit all of these sites, start at the Golden Pavilion, and then move on to the larger, grander structures. I think you'll appreciate it more. Also, very crowded. It is always going to be crowded there. There's nothing you can do about it. Cry. Deal with it. Am I going to use these? All time for For the end of the day, we took it a little easy. We visited Arashiyama, and it was a forest, and it was pretty, and there was all of this bamboo, and it was tall. But the shade of green, I think, is what I appreciated about it the most. It was this kind of light Kermit the Frog green that, when backlit by the sun trying to come through all of the thick branches, almost created a timeless mystical feeling people were just naturally quieter in the forest and even when it though it was crowded people would spread out enough or not go as far in and overall it was a good path to walk i would see this as a fantastic place to jog like every morning the so the paths kind of vary in steepness or flatness they're wide enough that you can get through them there were a lot of rickshaws pulling people um, women in their kimonos, uh, tourists, older gentlemen. That was a lot of fun, just watching them kind of pull them along. And I have to say, that is probably the best way to see the bamboo forest, is through that. While there, we also visited Tugetsukyo Bridge. It was big and pretty and very photogenic. It crossed over the river and the water was just rushing through. It felt cool and refreshing. There was ice cream and more cherry blossoms and people everywhere just having a good time and laughing. It, it almost felt like a community fair, just the atmosphere. There weren't games or rides or anything, but just that general camaraderie of all the people there having fun, laughing, eating, just enjoying the day. The sights there were really pretty. It was more of the backdrop. It's not something you go to as an event. Uh, this place is more for people who love to take pictures, who love to say they've been places, people who really just want to frame that perfect shot to make everybody else on Facebook jealous when they post it. As far as the tour was concerned, that was it. We, uh, we uh, drove out to... Osaka where we are right now and we decided or the tour guide took us to Dotemboro which is kind of like the cool hipster hot spot to hang out lots more anime stuff to buy <laughs>
Well, the view from our final apartment in Osaka. Our final hotel. Our, yeah, our final hotel. We are. We have, a we have one last night here. Uh, down there might be a little bit, and this is going to be our last evening shot. This is a very pretty city. I'm not going to lie. Here in Osaka, again, it amazes me just how different all cities are. Uh, when we were in Tokyo, it was bright and shiny and new. When we were in Kyoto, it was old and worn and lived in. And here in Osaka, we got more of the energy that I thought we'd get in Tokyo. The, there was just more crowd, there were more people, there were less cars, a lot more bicycles. but. The energy here was so much is so much more youthful. And that's going to do it for our little excursion in Japan. Tomorrow we go back to the airport. We're going to do an 11-hour flight. We're going to land back in California 5 hours before we took off because time zones are fun. And that'll be it. We'll be back in the states and life will go on. But my passport now has a stamp in it that says Japan. I think that was worth it.